Now, Universal uh, Studios uh, is virtually thrilled with the box office returns uh, that come in uh, from Frankenstein. Uh, it makes tons of money uh, very, very quickly. And Universal wants to put a sequel into production almost immediately. But uh, both James Whale and Boris Karloff are not exactly thrilled with the prospect of a sequel. By uh, late 1933, uh, a sequel to Frankenstein is definitely in the works. Uh, slated as a vehicle for Karloff and Lugosi. Uh, Bella was supposed to play the mad doctor role, uh, Dr. Pretorius, uh, but the role is later assigned to the friend of James Whale, Ernest uh, Thesinger, uh, who uh, was also in the old Dark House. Now, the title of the movie uh, was changed several times uh, from the return of Frankenstein to Frankenstein Lives Again, before finally settling uh, on The Bride of Frankenstein. Now, James Whale, the director, does not really want to make the movie, uh, but resigns himself to the inevitable. Uh, and the director hopes that he can wring a little more mileage out of the characters by going back to the original source, the uh, uh, Mary Shelley novel. Uh, Shelley's conception... Uh, is that the Frankenstein creature is more sinned against uh, than sinning. Uh, and, uh, well, the horrendous Dr. Pretorius uh, emerges as the real villain in James Whale's movie. Uh, Karloff, uh, as the monster, is shown in a much more sympathetic light than in the first Frankenstein movie. Uh, this point of uh, more sinned against than sinner is made clearer by scenes that were expunged or cut from the final uh, release prints of, uh, of the movie. Uh, for example, uh, Dr. Pretorius's demented body-snatching assistant Carl, uh, played by the great uh, Dwight Fry, uh, was shown committing a series of gruesome murders uh, for which the monster, Karloff, was ruthlessly hunted down for. Uh, another bizarre sequence involving Dwight Fry Carl, uh, which was also deleted, uh, in which Dr. Pretorius cheerfully explains that he keeps his hold on his assistant Carl because of an incident in which Carl Dwight Fry unwittingly body snatched a cataleptic woman whom Pretorius dissected alive. Uh, before being alerted to the situation by the unfortunate woman's um, uh, terrified screams. Black humor uh, rules the movie. Now, the makeup artist Jack Pierce uh, excels even his makeup job for the original Frankenstein movie uh, and creates a weirdly compelling figure out of The Bride of Frankenstein simply by including grisly reminders of her necrophilic origins uh, in the shroud-like floor-length robe, uh, her mummy-like wrapped hands and arms, and her frizzled hair uh, due to the electric shock of creation, uh, which is, of course, streaked through with lightning bolts of silver. Uh, now, Universal publicists, uh, from the get-go, uh, shouted the question, who will be the Bride of Frankenstein? Uh, this is well over a year before the film's production and release. Uh, a very big fuss was made uh, over the bride. Who's going to play the bride? Now, uh, there were screen tests of Phyllis Brooks and Brigitte Helm. Now, Brigitte Helm, for those of you who don't know, uh, was the robot tricks, the female robot in Lang's uh, classic silent movie, Metropolis. Uh, but the part eventually goes to Elsa Lancaster, the wife of Charles Lawton, uh, who are both friends to director James Whale. Uh, now, the, the bride is a type of doppelganger uh, in both title and concept, uh, because Lancaster also plays Mary Shelley, uh, as well as her fictional creation, the bride. Uh, she's very young and pretty in the prologue, but 
uh, towards the uh, climax of the movie, Lancaster finds herself built up on stilts uh, from her uh, height of five foot uh, four inches uh, to a towering height of seven feet. Uh, she was bound so tightly in bandages uh, that Miss Lancaster uh, had to be carried around the studio sets and fed via a tube. Uh, now, the bride's fantastic uh, force in the movie uh, was conceived by James Whale and Ernest Thysinger uh, because both men were very artistic and cartoonist. So they come up with the idea for the bride. Uh, they used the famous bust of Queen Nefertiri uh, as their inspiration. And, of course, the end product uh, is enlivened by Lancaster's acting talents. Uh, and uh, Elsa makes a memorable mate for Karloff's Frankenstein. Uh, now, Jack Pierce was very busy during production, the makeup dude. Uh, he had two monsters to make up each time instead of one. And this takes seven hours. Uh, modifications were needed for Karloff's costume and makeup. Uh, the undying Frankenstein monster... Uh, did not survive the original film's climactic holocaust totally unscathed. Uh, Karloff's hair, for example, uh, is now burned stubble, uh, exposing unsightly skull clips uh, and uh, their scars that now mark his cheeks. Uh, now, during filming of the first scene, uh, the monster's survival in an underground river beneath the uh, ruined uh, windmill uh, Karloff actually breaks his hip, uh, but uh, Karloff is a trooper, and after a few, uh, few days convalescence, he continues to work on the movie. Uh, you can see the pain of his injury uh, on his face during the filming uh, of the movie. Uh, now, The Bride of Frankenstein is a sequel. Uh, but the movie comes a lot closer to Shelley's original novel than the first Frankenstein film did. Uh, and James Whale's symbolism runs amok during the course of the movie. For example, Karloff's uh, mock uh, crucifixion sequence. Uh, well, the director, provides lightning shifts in tone uh, that he manages with amazing skill. Now, the climax of the movie, the creation of the bride, is so elaborate that the original Frankenstein movie pales by comparison. Uh, the operating table is raised on high. Uh, Carl Dwight Fry flies kites into the lightning-filled sky, and the bride is brought to life under an apparatus known as a cosmic diffuser. Uh, well... Uh, uses curiously cut close-ups and mockery in the music. Uh, Franz Waxman's excellent score uh, now chimes forth wedding bells uh, as Dr. Pretorius pronounces the bride of Frankenstein. Uh, Karloff uh, reaches beseechingly for his bandaged bride, but her reaction is a sh sharp screech or hiss of disgust. Uh, she hates him, just like all the rest. Uh, and a tear now flows from Karloff's cheek. Uh, the monster uh, then saves Dr. Frankenstein, Colin Clive, uh, and his kidnapped bride, Mar uh, uh, Marion Stewart, uh, and pulls a lever that blows up the laboratory. Now, Karloff then utters the famous last words, we belong dead. All right, so social lapse fuels the film's climax uh, as the bride catches her first sight of her intended uh, and reacts with that appalled hiss. Uh, the disillusioned Karloff then goes on another rampage and causes a, uh, well, configuration in which he, Pretorius, and the bride all perish. Now, The Bride of Frankenstein uh, is the biggest budgeted, best dressed, highest polished, and f finest horror film of the 1930s, possibly ever. Uh, this is a first-class Hollywood production 
made with artistry and technology. Uh, Karloff is now the undisputed king uh, of the Universal horror film. Uh, Bela, uh, Bela Lugosi is no longer any competition for him. Uh, by the time uh, 1935 rolls around, uh, Bella is seriously addicted to morphine, uh, and he starts making, well, lesser movies uh, that are an awful lot of fun, uh, but uh, they're not up to the production values of the Carlo films. Now, let's move on to The Black Room, 1938.